Overkill was released in the spring of 2010 and was quickly recognized as a new watermark in the genre. My style of filmmaking, which had produced the sense of reality and honesty that had made RTB a cult favorite, was now reaching a wider audience, and the feedback was very satisfying. But shooting Overkill for Kai Green was not the triumphant, pumping iron-like experience Kai was envisioning for himself. There's a lot of stuff that didn't get captured. Because there's the face that we have to put on, and then there's the face, the, there's the truth. I mean, you, you know, truth is, it was, there were a couple times when, you know, Oscar was ready to leap. You know, none of that stuff got captured on the camera. And there was a lot of, a lot of snags that could not be shown on camera just because if it would have gone on camera, it would have meant that that very delicate thing was a lot closer to ruin. I needed that situation to last. When Oscar and Kai finally saw Overkill for themselves, they were so surprised and pleased that they called me on the phone to apologize. After seeing the DVD and remembering that, you know, in, in aspect, even though we gave you full access, we thought we really gave you a very limited aspect. And what you made from the limited access, when, I, when we saw it in video, both me and Kai were really surprised in a happy way to see what you did with the things that we give you as far as access, you know, in the gym, in the room. And I, I, it was then that I thought, you know what, we should have given this guy more, 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 more time. And we would get more time. After viewing the rough cut of Overkill, Gerard Dente asked me to immediately begin shooting a follow-up as Kai prepared himself for the Arnold Classic in March of 2010. I found Gerard to be kind of a closet filmmaker at heart. He thought in cinematic terms and had a clear vision for what he wanted. As we discussed our plans for what would eventually become Kai Green Redemption, I began to get excited, imagining the unprecedented access I would be getting at the top level of bodybuilding. I was not able to get permission to shoot contest footage for Overkill. Instead, stealing screen grabs after the fact from the official online videos to help me tell the story. Now, Gerard assured me I would be getting full access to the expo, auditorium, and backstage, and I told him I would need to gather a crew in order to get all the different shots that would be necessary to chronicle the entire Arnold Classic experience. In the meantime, I was still shooting with Victor Martinez, and a DVD for him was long overdue. Unfortunately, time after time, just when we thought we might be ready to put something together for Victor, misfortune would strike, making it very hard to create a documentary with the triumphant ending everyone wanted. Not long after his second place finish at the 2007 Mr. Olympia, a contest that bodybuilding fans almost universally agree should have been won by Victor, he sustained a nearly catastrophic knee injury. Rehab and recuperation was followed by the death of his father only a few weeks before the following Olympia. Disappointing placings followed as Victor struggled to get his career back on track and rebuild his legs. And then, while training for the 2009 Olympia, tragedy struck yet again when Victor's 46-year-old sister Eridiana Rodriguez, a cleaning woman in New York City, was found brutally murdered. I love that sister very much mother, grandmother, and, and it's a horrible loss right now. Um, I just hope that when they catch this guy, that the law, the full extent of the law, goes down upon him. It's been a hellish week for Victor Martinez, waiting for word on his sister, who's been missing since Tuesday. She was, also, she was head of family. She was also like a mother to us, you know, to all of us. 
His beloved sister, Eredinha Rodriguez, the oldest of 10, worked as a cleaning woman at this Rector Street high rise in lower Manhattan. But today, police remove a woman's body from the building that was stuffed in an air conditioning duct on the 12th floor. Rodriguez's cleaning cart found just four floors below and a change of clothes and her purse still in her locker. Well, today, relatives waited with heavy hearts as detectives came to her apartment in Inwood. Family still not making a positive identification. Furious and devastated, Victor decided to push on and compete. But the emotional strain was unavoidable and apparent. Last year, I planned, OK, let me do the Olympia and skip the honors just so I could focus on the Olympia, given my injury. But with the loss of my sister, it was uh, the holidays was something I was already dreading once uh, the, the Olympia was over. So we tried to get into spirit and, and, and see if we could just get together on behalf of my sister and, and try to make it work. But it, it just it was just I think it made it worse. Once New Year's rolled around and the clock struck 12 midnight, I, it was just uh, a mess. Everybody was a mess, including myself. Uh, I couldn't come to grips, and all I can think of was this guy paying for it, you know? The thoughts I had, I mean, never good thoughts on what I would do to him and what I would like to happen to him. and. But just seeing my sister's faces and my nieces and that, it was just the pain. As it does for so many in times of stress, the gym provided an outlet for his feelings of frustration and his desire for revenge. That, that, that's my only uh, consolation is just going to the gym. I mean, there's days I don't feel like going to the gym and I go to the gym. He's, days that I just need it. I just need it because of the uh, anger I have uh, at the loss. So the gym is definitely, has is, is always been uh, an escape for me, always since my childhood and now with the tragedy. One of the most amazing things about lifting weights and bodybuilding is what it can do for you when you're under duress. I remember when I went through my divorce, it was a horrible time. And I couldn't control the lawyers, and I couldn't control her actions, and I couldn't control the families, and I couldn't control this and that, but the one thing I could control was the fact that I got my ass up and out to that gym, and I busted my ass, and I left nothing there. Nothing on the table. It was the thing that I could do to take control of something in my life. Victor gained a lot of my respect when he trained for that show just after the death of his sister. I can't imagine how he pushed on. But again, the things we learn through bodybuilding, they can really carry over into life in any area, but Man, it's a great way of overcoming shit. It really is. At the 2009 Olympia, Martinez places sixth. Not great, but respectable for someone working his way back to the top. Despite everything, Victor's fan base is incredibly loyal and insist that he will eventually capture the crown that was so unfairly denied him in 2007.